So, how's it going? Do you like DevGam? What do you think about Moscow? Yeah, it's been good. This is my first time in Moscow. And I've actually wanted to come to Russia for so long, so it's kind of nice. Uh, it would be nice if I could see more of Moscow. Uh, I, might, I might do a sneaky nip out tomorrow and see if I can see some of it. But um, yeah, no, DevGam is always really cool. Especially um, because I used to write about games and we never heard about Russian games. I guess because Russian developers don't like talking about their games. <laughs> so, um, so it's really nice to come to DevGam and actually see Russian games because there's so many cool games. Um, so yeah, it's always, it's always really nice to, to do DevGam. Okay, so uh, do you know any interesting practice for developers? I mean, how to promote your game uh, through some special live events, you know, like uh, Square Enix with new Deus Ex or like Darkest Dungeon with PlayStation in seven days. So what what uh, can you, what kind of advice can you give uh, for a young uh, or indie developer for some, you know, some new promotion for, for the... Well, I think when it comes to developers trying to get people to play their games, yeah. the, the, the main thing that a lot of developers don't realize... I mean, instead of for YouTube or Twitch or something. something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, well, I mean, the, the thing is that a lot of developers just don't, don't seem to want to talk about their games in the first place, right? <laughs> yeah. So the, I see so many developers who, um, it, it comes to the launch day of their game, and they've, they've not talked about the game yet, and then they just talk about the game the day it comes out. And that's always, uh, I don't know, I don't know why developers do that. I don't know if it's because they're worried about showing their games to people, and they're just a bit scared of what the reaction's going to be. But, of course, the problem is if they, um, if they wait until the day that it comes out, then the reaction is going to be that no one plays it, because no one knows what it is. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know about yeah, <laughs> I don't know about special promotions and such. I feel like more developers should just be focusing on the basics of it and just focusing on the actual talking about their games. It always say, not even just Russian developers, just everybody. Everybody is terrible at talking about their games, and it just it seems like if the if the worry is that you know people are going to ignore you or if people are going to say they don't like it that of course there's going to be some people who don't like your game, right? I, not everybody loves every game. Yeah, sure. So, um, yeah, it just, it just needs to be. I keep trying to hammer it into developers. I keep <laughs> trying to say, please talk about your games. Please. It's, it's, it's such a big problem at the moment. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, does uh, Twitch acceptable for all uh, game genres? How do you think? Say again. Uh, does Twitch is acceptable for every kind of genre or it's just more for strategy or action yeah. games? Or uh, so there's definitely genres that work better on Twitch. So, um, so there's certain games that um, when you watch them, they're just not that interesting. Right? There's, I mean, there's loads of mobile games like that. You pl play some mobile games and you're sat there, like, you play for like two hours thinking, you oh, know, probably should stop playing this now. But if someone was watching you, they just think it looked quite boring. It's only when you actually play it that you realize how much fun it is. And those, those kind of games, you know, kind of don't do so well. I guess it's one of the reasons why there's not as many mobile games on Twitch, right? Because a lot of mobile games are like that. There's it's more about much. gameplay than just, you know, it's... Yeah, working. and a lot of mobile games as well are focused on, on quick games, right? Yeah, They're sure. like a quick three minutes Short or whatever. Session, yeah. And Twitch is more like someone sits at their PC for seven hours mm. and just doesn't move <laughs> and shoots loads of things. So yeah, there's, there's definitely, um, certain, like you said, there's definitely certain kinds of games that work better on Twitch. But um, I mean, it, it, it still doesn't mean that you don't try. Because like um, Clash of Clans, for example, that doesn't seem like it would work on Twitch. But it has a massive Twitch following. If you go and search Clash of Clans, there's tons of people playing really? that. And that's, you know, I wouldn't think that would be big on Twitch. But it is. So, yeah. I mean, it's... You, you never know. No, exactly. Twitch is still really early. Right? Mm -hmm. This whole live streaming thing, people are still trying to work it out. So, regardless of if you think your game is going to do well on Twitch or not, you should still just try. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> <clears throat> what is your experience with new media channels such as Plague uh, and uh, 
Do you know anything else like this kind of uh, system? Like, do you know the, about Plague? Oh, plague. Oh, Plague, yeah, yeah. I know Plague, yeah. Plague is interesting. So I actually, um, I experimented with Plague for, for Tiny Build, and I kept, I put things on there. Um, it worked a little bit, but uh, the, the problem was that, you know, the way that it spreads, it's kind of difficult, right? Because um, it's, I don't know, it, it was a bit like some people would pick up on it. And uh, so, for example, one thing I tried was I tried giving free games away on Plague. Mm -hmm. So I made a post where it was a bunch of games. I said, here's some free games, pass it on. And I put some codes for free games. Mm -hmm. um, but the problem is that people just take the codes and then just don't pass it on. So, so it was just like a small number of people just took mm -hmm. some codes, and then I tried just doing like a giveaway, you know, a sort of um, if you, you know, if you share this or whatever, then you know, and go to this page or whatever, then you can go in for a raffle to see if you win. But then people weren't sharing that because the more people they shared it with, then the less that they would have the chance of winning. So, <laughs> so plague didn't really work out. Um, I don't, I don't know how big plague is anymore because I tried it uh, about five months ago or something. Mm -hmm. So it might be bigger now than, and it might work better. Probably. But when I tried it, it was a bit tricky. So <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, example. I'm a Russian developer yes. uh, who wants to start working on something big, like uh, something console or. Uh, game uh, with you know adventure game or yep. action game uh, what should I do to give uh, to take uh, more attention or attraction from uh, uh, West uh, media I mean like from Europe or United States mm. what what should I do I, what what kind of conference uh, should I go or what what do I think so with these kind of things it's always a question of um, how much money you have right because if you I, I mean like a in the, uh, the developers like team for five or maybe ten people like yeah. some kind of like this. So if you if you have the means to go to con conferences, things like E3 and, mm -hmm. um, and GDC and things like that. But that tickets are very expensive. Yeah, yeah. They are. Uh, is it? Uh, uh, is it worth it? Yes. Yeah. Uh, it's um, maybe. <laughs> it's a terrible answer. So, because, because so, so I know what a lot of developers do is they'll go to the conferences, but they won't buy the conference pass, mm -hmm. and they'll just hang out, and that seems to work for a lot of people. So, so GDC, for example, <laughs> I know a lot of um, indie developers. Even just um, walking around. Yeah. <laughs> so the thing about the thing about GDC is, and this is, I mean, I used to work for mm -hmm. Gama Sutra, who are you know part of GDC. Mm -hmm. um, so I shouldn't say this, but a lot of indie developers that I know will will just hang out at GDC because the pass like that you pay for is mainly like for talks and, and the expo, right? Mm -hmm. And if you are showing you're going there to show a game, you don't really need that. <laughs> like you know, you do, yeah. maybe you don't maybe it would be useful to go and see the talks, but if you really, you know, can't, haven't got the cash to do that, mm -hmm. it's still worth just going because the fact is that you like at GDC for example, you have this incredible number of influential game developers all in the same place in one time and that rarely happens right there's only a, a small number of times and the number of times when I've gone to GDC and I've just bumped into someone maybe drunk maybe not <laughs> when I have you know started talking to them and then because I talked to them there then like a couple of years later I'm now working with them or I, I know them well enough to ask them can we do this can we do that um, it's it's really understated. There's a there's, there's some developers who will say you don't need to go to events. You can just mm -hmm. you can do it from home, and that's fine for a lot of developers. That works, but I know that a lot of developers as well who would say that going to events and talking to other developers and just and getting like influence from those people as mm -hmm. well has really helped them get to where they are. So it, it's it's a, a balance. You know, it's weighing mm -hmm. up. Is it worth it for me? Is X amount of money that it's going to cost for our, to cart our team around the world to these things worth that kind of you know getting that kind of influence from people basically. Okay, Mike, uh, we've done. Thank you so much. Excellent. Thank you very much.